The channel. In today's video we're going to be photographing leaping salmon. That's if there are any salmon there that are leaping. So I've brought you here today to the Northumberland town of Hexham and we're just at the main road bridge and as you can see down there behind me making all the noise is the way in. and this is one of the best places to come and watch salmon leaping and to photograph them. So what we're going to do today, I'll take you through how I, my approach to leaving salmon, what I do, the settings I use, and I'm going to be using one of these. This is a little cheap radio trigger. I have one for me. The camera I'm filming on, which is the Canon 7D Mark II, the camera I'm going to use today photograph the salmon because it's got a much higher frame rate. I also have a Canon EOS R. I have another cheapy radio control remote trigger for that. However with that one it although there, it works it only takes two photographs and then I have to repress the button whereas this one as long as I hold my finger down, my thumb down, sorry, this will keep firing until my buffer fills. So, yeah, with those cheapies, you pays your money and you takes your chance. But what's your experiences with them? Have you found that the, the cheaper end remotes work just as well? Or have you gone for the makers? So I think that's what I'm going to have to do with the EOS R. Well, let me know in the comments below. What we're going to do now, I'm going to go just down to my left. There's a spot where you can get down the bank. I'm going to set up my tripod, set the camera up. It's probably going to be harder to talk down there because the noise will increase, but I'll do the best I can. Yeah, let's get on with it. Just down there. That's the basics of the camera set up. I've got it levelled, got it pointing basically where I want it. Next thing I'm going to do is touch my radio trigger and then I'll sort out camera settings. So this one is made by JJC. Can't remember what it cost me, but it wasn't much. Maybe it's 20 pounds. Now, it can be a little bit tricky metering, as you can see, the water's quite brown and chocolatey coloured. But there are white highlights. So what you've got to remember is if a fish comes out, it's going to be quite light coloured and shiny, and we don't want to blow those highlights. So I've got the camera set F8 one two thousandth of a second an auto ISO the auto ISO is given 640 ISO for the chocolatey coloured water and 125 ISO for the highlights so while this sums out it's where I'm going to set my ISO a little bit more 200 I'll set it to ok so we're all just about set up We've got one two thousandth of a second, ISO 200, F8, high frame rate, continuous shooting, set the way I servo. So we're all ready to go. 
test shot. Yeah, that's working. It's firing away. Hard to tell in the bright sunlight, certainly for my eyes. But it looks like the highlights are exposed correctly. The water, the darker water, if anything, slightly underexposed. We can deal with that in post processing. Very hot though, so I'm taking the jacket off. I'm a little bit concerned because I haven't seen a fish jump yet. Last week when I was here, there was fish jumping every few minutes. Well, I've had a lot of rain and the water, sorry, the fish that were in this pool will have moved up. They'll be upriver now, but there should still be some more. So now it's just a case of looking out for them. Now you may be asking, I can hear you asking, why Martin, why use the radio trigger? Why not just sit there or stand there with your tripod set up or even handheld? And you can do that, there's nothing stopping you. This is what I found works the best. It's to pre focus, I can't continually look through the viewfinder. By the time I see a fish in the viewfinder, it's gone. But I can stand back from a distance. I can sit down and have a cup of coffee. I can go for a walk, stretch my legs. As you can see, it's a bit of a precarious bank size. It's not flat. I can sit on this wall here where it is flat. As soon as I see a fish, hit the radio trigger. The downside is because I'm pre focused, the fish has to jump within that plane of focus. I've gone off past experience, what I would say is, have a look for yourselves, when you see fish jumping, watch them for a while, and they will jump, like here, hey, they'll jump all over the full length of the way, however, there'll be certain spots where they jump more often than other times, and usually that's where, not always, but usually that's always where, the water is the most powerful and the reason for that is where it's the most powerful means at the top of the way it's a bit deeper and the fish know that when they get up there they'll be in the water then some of them come up this still here and you can see them powering up in literally that much water it's amazing to watch and it's amazing to photograph need to get your timing right, but that's just practice. Okay, yeah, I've had about an hour here so far. I've seen one stick its head out. It didn't jump, but especially the, the larger fish, you'll often see them do that. you see a head come out. And what they're doing is they're looking. Basically, they're having a little look and deciding whether to go for it or not. So hopefully, we'll We'll get one. Yeah. Keep watching because at some point the will turn up. As I, as I said, the fish that were in the pool, because the pools tend to collect them when the water runs low, and then when you get a bit of rainwater through, that's it, they're all the way up the river towards the spawning grounds. But if the river's too high, they won't move. And if the river's too dirty, they won't move and they tend to just lie in the slacks up and down the river, the little slack areas out of the main floor and wait. Pools like this are great collection places for the salmon. It's just about time it right. I mean, we're on the last day of August today. Traditionally, for that few decades, 
this used to be the best time to get a late run of big fish and it used to be the 20, 30, 40 pounders not too many of those fish left these days however they're not doing too bad they're not doing too bad they appear to be on the increase again One went there, and I don't think it was where I was focused. I think that one is soft, but we'll see. One's moving, you might get a few more. Now you see the beauty of the radio trigger. You don't have to sit there with your eye in the viewfinder for it. There's another one. As far as timing goes, early mornings and late evenings, as with all wildlife, they're usually the best time. So I'm here in the middle of the day. It's not the best time, but you will still see fish move, just not as many. The goose sand has just gone along there. You find that's often the case as well. You get little flurries, two or three fish will move, go quiet for a while, and then another two or three will move. So now one, one question that I'm often asked is when is the best time to see the salmon jump? The best time is after a period of settled weather where there's been more rain so the river's quite low it's time for the fish to collect in the pools and then if you get a bit of overnight rain to just raise that water level a little bit the fish will start moving upstream so after a period of settled weather it's your best time today because it's after a period of heavy rain the river has fined down it's not running through anything like as powerful as it was a few days ago and i have seen one or two fish but not many there's a few more days to settle off any fish coming upstream and they will still be coming in from the sea the majority will be gone now and say it's the last day of August but there will still be fish coming and who knows maybe even that big one but to come back again a few days of settled weather and let's see there's a few more fish but we've got one or two I think there's one it may have turned out alright, wasn't a big fish, but better than nothing. Alright, I've had about three hours here now, something like that. We'll pack up for the day now and come back. I will be back when it's been settled for a few more days. All I've got to do now is get back up that bank side. <laughs> <laughs>